All right, everyone, back in Ocean's 11, this is the $10 double board bomb pot game. First interesting hand, we look down at Queen 9 3 3, double suited under the gun. We go to flops of Queen Jack 9 Rainbow and King 3 3 Rainbow. The opponent of the big blind leads for 60. I don't see any point of doing anything besides calling, so that's what I do, and everyone else gets out of the way. So we're going heads up to two turns. The turns bring a 7 on the top and a 6 on the bottom. My opponent this time bets 130. I think for a bit before putting everything in the middle and he snap calls. So we're going heads up to two rivers. The rivers bring a two on the top and a jack on the bottom. My opponent turns over the king, king five. So he had the flush draw on the top and kings full on the bottom and we're gonna scoop it here. So pretty good start to the session. Shortly after the previous hand, I looked down at nine, seven, four, three, double suited in middle position. We go to flops of king, five, four with two hearts and nine, nine, six with two clubs. When it checks to me, I bet 10 and there are three callers. So we're going four ways to two turns. The turns bring a four on the top and a five on the bottom. When it checks to me, I bet 100 and there's one caller. So we're going heads up to two rivers. The rivers bring a nine on the top and a jack on the bottom. And I decide on 200 this time. My opponent thinks a bit and makes the call. I turn it over and we're good. So taking down another good pot here. Shortly after the previous hand, I looked down at 9973 single suited on the button. We go to flops of 1075 rainbow and ace 95 with two diamonds. Checks all the way to me. I bet $10 and only Chris makes the call, who's actually the host of the game. So if you're interested in either this game or the Friday night game, which is a bomb pot round, round of PLO four and a round of PLO high low or big O five, definitely let me know and I can get you in contact with him. Turns bring a king on the top and a four on the bottom. Chris checks, I bet 90. He thinks for a bit and makes it 300. And pretty tough spot here as obviously I don't really have much on the top and could be behind now on the bottom to a wheel. So I think for a bit and fold and he turns over pocket kings for the turn set on the top. So Chris is gonna take this one down. Here look down at ace eight seven four single suited on the button. We go to flops of 10, six, three rainbow and seven, seven, three rainbow. Checks to me, I bet 10, and there are two callers, so we're going three ways to two turns. Turns bring an eight on the top and an ace on the bottom. Checks to me again, this time I bet 100, and both opponents fold, so we're gonna take this one down. All right, just taking a quick second to remind everyone that Josh and I are gonna be back in Chicago next month, Saturday, April 1st, and Sunday, April 2nd. This is hosted by CCG Poker. If you'd like to reserve yourself a seat, click on the link below, it'll be at the top of the description. We'll make sure we got you a spot. Looking forward to seeing everyone out there. Shortly after the previous hand, I looked down at queen eight five four single suit in the small blind. We go to flops of jack four three rainbow and ace seven three rainbow. I check over to a middle position player who bets 50. One caller to me, I call and there are two callers behind. So we're going five ways to two turns. The turns bring a two of clubs on the top and a six of clubs on the bottom. I think for a bit and bet 240. Player to my left makes the call. Daryl, a couple seats to my left, he also makes the call. One fold before a late position player thinks for a bit and also calls. So didn't expect to have three callers, but we're going four ways to two rivers. Rivers bring a king on the top and a jack on the bottom. So it doesn't change anything, still have the nuts on the bottom and that's good enough for me to shove everything in the middle. Player to my left thinks for a bit, makes the call. Daryl puts everything in the middle as well. And the late position player looks like he's in pain and he turns over pocket jacks. So pretty sick that he flopped top set and then rivered the set on the bottom board, but he thinks a bit and eventually folds. So I turn over my hand, the player to my left turns over king 10, six, five. So he has the nuts on the top. And then Daryl doesn't look too happy about that. As he turns over his hand, he has queen eight, six, five. So they end up both getting quartered and uh, you know, we're gonna win a pretty good size pot here. Here look down at ace king jack two single suit in the small blind. We go to flops of ace ace jack rainbow and queen nine four rainbow. I bet $10 and there are three callers. So we're going four ways to two turns. The turns bring a seven on the top and an eight on the bottom. I bet 50 and there's only one caller. So we're going heads up to two rivers. The rivers bring a five on the top and a four on the bottom. I bet 200 as obviously I don't really have anything on the bottom. My opponent seems like he's pretty new to double ward bomb pots. He says that he has a full house on the bottom, but that he obviously loses to pocket queens. So he tanks for a little bit over a minute and eventually folds. So we got uh, you know him off his half the pot and we're gonna take it down. Here look down at King Jack 5-4 single suited under the gun. We go to flops of eight, seven, six with two spades and queen 10-5 with two clubs. Checks to me, I bet 10 and there are five callers. So we're going six ways to two turns. The turns bring a jack on the top and an ace on the bottom. 
Checks me again. I bet 150 is obviously there's a lot of draws out there that I want to charge the maximum for. One caller over to a late position player who's actually the table chip leader. He makes it 750 and folds back to me. So what went through my mind in the moment is that calling seemed to be the worst option of the three as that would really price in the third player to kind of come along with his most likely flush draw of some sort. So that was out. Folding seemed a little too tight, although I don't have a redraw on the bottom and it's pretty likely here that my opponent also has King Jack, but I should actually still be good on the top as I probably would have heard from someone if they had either 9-5 or 9-10. So I decided to shove all in and hopefully get it heads up against the chip leader here where you know I can potentially three quarter him. The other player thinks for a bit and eventually faults and back to the chip leader who thinks a bit and makes the call but says he's probably gonna need some help. So that's good news, good news for us and we're going heads up to two rivers. My opponent says he's gonna need a nine the river brings an ace on the top and a five on the bottom, which pairs the board, but my opponent doesn't look too happy about it. And I turn over my hand, he turns over his, he does have king jack as well. And looks like I'm gonna get three quarters here. But then about three seconds go by and he says, oh wait, flush. And shows the king six of hearts for the rivered flush on the top. So pretty frustrating that it goes from me getting three quarters of this massive pot to him now getting three quarters. So we're gonna lose a big one here. To my knowledge, that was the biggest pot that I've lost. Now I still did get half my money back, but $1,500 swing there on the end in which I lost and where my opponent didn't actually know what he had until someone else pointed out to him. So I'm wondering for you guys out there, what is the biggest pot that you've ever lost in which that's also happened to you? Definitely comment down below. I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say. Shortly after the previous hand, I looked down at ace, 10, seven, five, double suit in the cutoff. We go to flops of nine, eight, six with two diamonds and jack seven, five with two spades. Action checks to me, I bet $10 and there are four callers. So we're going five ways to two turns. The turns bring a nine on the top and a 10 of spades on the bottom. So pretty awful cards on both. Action checks to me and I check as well. So still going five ways to two rivers. The rivers bring a five of diamonds on the top and another 10 on the bottom. Early position player now bets 130. There's one caller over to me, and while my straight is pretty much never good on the top, I thought there was a pretty decent chance that my full house on the bottom could be good. So I make the call, everyone else folds, and the early position player turns over jack 10 for the higher full house on the bottom, and the other player who called shows pocket eights. So they're gonna chop it up here, and another L for us. About 30 minutes after the previous hand, I looked down at ace, ace, king, five, single suit in the hijack. We go to flops of king, jack, four, rainbow, and eight, five, three, rainbow. Action checks to me. I bet $10. Two callers over to Chris, who makes it 20. I call and the other two players call. So we're going four ways to two turns. Turn to bring a two on the top and an ace on the bottom. Checks to Chris, who bets 60. I put everything in the middle. Folds back to Chris, who makes the call. So we're going heads up to two rivers. The rivers bring a queen on the top and a seven on the bottom. And Chris turns over the 5432 for the wheel on the bottom and two pair on the top. And looks like he's going to scoop us here. What's up, guys? Wayne back here with you. So today I was in for 600, out for zero. You know, unfortunately, it kind of came down to that one big hand there. You know, went from being a favorite to three quarter to getting three quarter. So that's how it goes sometimes. Um, you know, what I do is I bring a second bullet with me. And after I lose the first bullet, I assess the game and other factors such as if I'm playing well and everything and I thought I was playing pretty well for the most part but the game really wasn't that great which is why I decided to rack up after losing the first bullet so just a little insight to my strategy there uh, if you haven't seen the previous episode I'm gonna go ahead and link it up here and I'll see you guys in the next one take care